Let's, let's pay homage to the lineage gurus, homage to the venerable Mang Liao Ming, homage to Master Sakya Zeng Kong, homage to His Holiness the Sixteen Kamapa, homage to Master Dutton Dorji, homage to the Three Jewels of the Altar, and homage to the main deity of Homa today, Chintamani Avalokiteswara Bodhisattva. Sumo, Tanzan Katso, Tutan City, all Dharma masters, Dharma educators, Dharma teachers, Dharma lecturers, Dharma assistants, directors of temples and chapters, all disciples present here and over the internet. Good afternoon. How do you do? Ai steru. Sarange. Sarange. Hola amigo. Hola amigo. Te quiero mucho. Te quiero mucho. Sukoi. Sukoi. Ichiba. Kimochi. Kimochi. Yumi. Yumi. Yapi. Yapi. Ling ling. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. I would like to announce for next Sunday, August 2nd, is August already next week? August 2nd, Sunday at 3 p.m. There will be Ganapati. The Red Jambala. Red Jambala, Ganapati. Thai offering ceremony. And Ganapati in Tantrayana is a major wealth deity. And he's also the main deity for resources. So if you don't want any money or you don't want any uh, riches, then you don't need to register for primary applicants. That's it. Nothing more to say. <laughs> Ganapati, it's good. Uh, every time before the Dharma teaching, I like to start with the joke. The joke goes, 
Someone is a stuttering. And he's about to die in the desert. And all of a sudden, his feet kick on an, a genie lamp. And the genie got out. <laughs> we call it genie. And the genie said, I can fulfill one of your wish. Please say it quickly. And he answered, because he stutters, right? So he said, I, 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 I want, 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 Old, old, old wife. And the genie immediately uh, transformed a beautiful lady for him. And you're about to die and you still want uh, beauty? That's so sad. And then the genie disappeared. And he, this person continued old wife cake there's an inspiration from this joke it's very simple Every time we listen or talk or when we listen to the Dharma, we need to listen to it completely. We need to listen to all of it. So in our spiritual cultivation, we cannot uh, just get things out of context. First, you need to practice the path of merit accumulation, and then you practice the preliminary practices. And then you see the path, and then you practice the path. And lastly, it's the ultimate path. You attain the ultimate. So from the basics to the ultimate. And in Tantrayana, we need to first do the preliminary practices, the Root Guru Yoga. And then the Yidam practice, and then the inner practices, and then the highest yoga tantra, and lastly the great perfection. So it's stage by stage. You cannot just practice the highest yoga tantra because that's what you heard. So that's the meaning of the joke. In our Buddhist studies, we have to follow the stages. We have to start with the development stage and then lastly the perfection stage. You cannot skip the steps unless you have cultivated spiritually in the past lives, that you have a sharp spiritual root. So your spiritual root is extremely strong and sharp in order for you to have great attainments. Or most people have to cultivate spiritually according to the stages 
and you yeah. cannot uh, get them out of context. Or pick and choose. So today, uh, we perform the Chintamani Avalokiteswara. It's very simple. Avalokiteswara Bodhisattva already has great Dharma power, very high Dharma power. And on top of it, she has the Chintamani, which is the money jewel, and the four. Uh, attainment practices can be uh, attained through the money jewel that radiates bright yellow light. If you want purification, there's a way for enrichment or magnetization or subjugation. There are the methods. So Dharma practices related to the Chintamani or Mani Jewel. So if you practice until you gain spiritual union with Chintamani Avalokiteswara or Avalokiteswara Bodhisattva, then whatever you do, it will go smoothly because you have this wish fulfilling jewel, then of course whatever you do will go smoothly. If you gain spiritual union with Chintamani, then everything will go really well. And not encountering any obstructions or hindrances, they all will be naturally uh, eliminated. So those are the Dharma practices for Chintamani Avalokiteswara. And the appearance, the white robe Avalokiteswara wearing white garment, and his hand, one hand is holding the money jewel, the other hand is forming the wish-fulfilling mudra. And our mudra is like this. And the sit syllable is Shih because Avalokiteswara Bodhisattva belongs to the Lotus Division of Amitabha Buddha. So his sit syllable is She, the same as Amitabha's. I have learned the divine mantra of the Chintamani Avalokiteswara. And then you add the jie zi, jie zi, jie zi for the money jewel. That's the mantra for Chinta Mani, Avalokiteswara. Now, we will enter into the question and answer. Amitabha. Amitabha. I like Grandmaster's advice. Trapping, neutering, and then releasing or adopting a pet is like a replacement for euthanasia. It is to control the numbers of homeless dogs and cats by human beings. Is this good? Is it, will they bear karmic retribution from doing so? That the name of the disciple is Dian Hua Jia Huan. Trapping, neutering, releasing, or adopting a pet is like a replacement for euthanasia. 
It is to control the numbers of homeless dogs and cats by human beings. Is this good? Will they bear karmic retribution from doing so? Wow. This is something worth thinking. Tanzan Katsu, you should understand this. Think about it. Today is Tanzan Katsu's birthday. Oh. Next Tuesday. Then why did you cut the cake today? <laughs> they do it earlier. Well, because we celebrate earlier, so that's your birthday then. So who can answer it better? Who has the confidence to answer it correctly? So if you trap, neuter, or release, or adopt homeless dogs and cats, is that a good thing? Do you need to... Bear the karmic retribution. Master Lian Song should answer. Uh, it should be a good thing. Because now in America, there are many groups who help the homeless dogs and cats to neuter them because if they don't control it then there would be many more homeless dogs and cats and they would die being homeless out there in one or two years so therefore many people would neuter them so that they don't continue to bear the puppies and kittens and we invite the pet owners or adopters to find the homeless dogs and cats in the pound. So the question is, will they bear karmic retribution from doing so? I think it's a good thing, so they should have a good retribution. And just now, Tan Shin Katsu said the same thing. So I guess that's the answer. That's what I think too. So three of us think this way. So now you have the good answer. Because you have good intention, so it's a good thing. Otherwise we have so many homeless dogs and cats and they can even transmit contagious diseases and they die easily. So that should be a good thing. The second question, how much to Grandmaster? Can we use Padma Kumara Mantra 
to when we are blessing water, do we follow the same procedure as for the Mahakaruni, Mahakaruna Dharani, or Great Compassion Water? It's a disciple from Macau. From Macau. Can we use Padma Kumara Mantra when we are blessing water? And do we follow the same procedure as for the Great Compassion Water? Let me ask Padma Kumara. <laughs> His answer is very neutral. He said, We already have the great compassion water. We already have Mahakaruna Dharani water. And the great compassion water is blessed by many deities. Thousand eyes, thousand arms. I will look at this water, Bodhisattva. And his Mahakaruna Dharani. And also, uh, there's the procedure too. But for Padma Kumara Hat Mantra, to do the water blessing is the same as putting a head on top of the head. That's not necessary. If there is no mantra water, then we can create one using Patmakumara. However, the Mahakaruna Dharani has an extremely great power, so we should just focus the Mahakaruna Dharani water or Great Compassion water. Nobody has ever heard of Padma Kumara Mantra water. So, in my opinion, it is good to have the Mahakaruna Dharani water. We don't have to have another one. Because if we do the Padma Kumara Mantra water, then there would also be Jundi Mantra water, Amitabha Mantra water, uh, Vairukana Mantra water, Five Dhyani Buddhas Mantra water, all the Herukas and all deities have their own mantra water. So it's better if just to focus to one, don't complicate things. Like Trubuddha School has so many temples and spiritual centers and chapters. And everyone does their own mantra water. So which water would you take? I would still drink the Mahakaruna Dharani water. Because we already have Mahakaruna Dharani water. That's good enough. We don't need to use Padma Kumara Hat Mantra. It's a very simple answer. We already have it. Don't need to complicate matters. That's what I think. The Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, when I consulted, they 
stay neutral. If you want to drink water and you want to make it into Padma Kumara Mantra water, go ahead. But I don't want to complicate things. The simpler the better. We'll just take Mahakaruna Dharani water. The next question, when we chant mantra, can we link two or more mantras together, like like Om Guru Lian Sen Siti Hom, Om Guru Guru Chuli Soha. Can we? If you combine the practice of Padma Kumara and Guru Gule Buddha Mother, however, is it okay to combine the practice of Padma Kumara and Guru Gule? Typically speaking, Padma Kumara is combined with Vajra Sattva. You can combine the practices of Padma Kumara and Vajra Sattva. But can you combine Padma Kumara and Guru Guli? You're too smart. Just like the question earlier, Padma Kumara Mantra Water, now link two or more mantras together. Let me consult. <laughs> the questions they ask is something I never thought of. They are really gifted. Their advice is the ones related can be chanted together. So um, the mantras that are linked together can be chanted together. But if they don't have any uh, relationship, then you should not uh, make it as you like. I often said, the egg, thousand-year-old egg and salted eggs can be combined together. Chicken egg, thousand-year-old egg and salted egg become the three color eggs, which is the bastard. <laughs> like a mix, a mix of bastard. <laughs> but when they are not related, you should not mix them together. The same thing when we cook. Certain things cannot be mixed together. Certain things can be mixed together, then it would taste good. But things that cannot be mixed together, that should not be mixed together. <laughs> like you put chili peppers and vinegar. Garlic, salt and sugar, <laughs> and seaweed and durian. <laughs> that is 
Then that would be, that would be like. So I think. Recklessly mixed and muddled. So Om Guru Lian Sung City Home and Om Betza Sato A Home Bay are rather related. So Rud Guru Mantra and Bajasatwa Mantra are related. And you should not mix any others that you don't know, that are not customarily linked together. Otherwise, you may mix up a really bad taste. So the answer the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas gave was neutral. We should not be too smart for ourselves. Then you would create problem for yourself if you are such a smart ass. What is the best way to make our family members to become a Buddhist so that they are willing to take refuge in the Three Jewels? Is there a special practice so that they can create affinity with the Buddha? Please advise. I have talked about this before, right? Every time when you do your Dhamma practice, you visualize they are practicing together with you. Then you are increasing their affinity with Buddha. Every time you do your practice, you visualize he or she practicing together next to you. So, like we visualize your father and the father's clan, mother, I mean father on your right and the mother and mothers on the left, and friends and teachers behind you, enemies and comic creditors in front of you, and all around you, all sentient beings together practicing then you are helping all the sentient beings of the six rebirth realms already. Then that kind of Dharma practice is the most complete. If you want your family members to become Buddhists, then you visualize them to be sitting around you when you practice and visualize them practicing together with you, then you gradually increasing their Buddha's affinity. We've talked about this before. That would be the best way. And that is also a special practice for family members or relatives that have not taken refuge to create affinity with the Buddha. Just visualize them practicing together with you. Or give them the great compassion water to drink. Make them frequently drink the Mahakaruna Dharani water. Or let them eat the fruits or the offering items that have been offered to the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas that would increase their affinity. If that still doesn't work, then you write down the mantra and you burn it and then put it into water and to let them drink it. That would also increase their affinity with the Buddha. So even if you don't succeed in this lifetime, then in the future lifetimes they would, because you have planted the seeds of the Buddha. This is important. The next one, asked by Lian Hua Ji He from China, is the body vow the same as Generating bodhicitta. 
What is the body wow? Bodhi's vow is the vow for the nature of mind. We often say body, but do you know what body means? Body is the nature of the mind. And the nature of the mind is also Buddha nature. It's the same as Buddha nature. So the body vow is the same as the vows of Buddha nature. Of course, it is generating bodhicitta. And generating bodhicitta is the mind to deliver the sentient beings widely. When we make the merit dedication, may all uphold the Buddha, ascend to the realm of, of utmost bliss. This is generating bodhicitta. We pray that all who uphold or chant the name of the Buddha be reborn in the Buddha land and be paying for full generosities above. That's generating bodhicitta and helping those in the three lower realms, that's also generating bodhicitta. Seeing the Buddha, may we transcend life and death. Once you see the Buddha, you transcended life and death. Like the Buddha, you liberate all. That's also generating bodhicitta. Like the Buddha, you are liberating all sentient beings. That's generating bodhicitta. So, is body vow the same as generating bodhicitta? Yes, that's correct. So, by making the vow of body, it's the same as giving happiness to sentient beings, to uproot the suffering of sentient beings, and you to do them with joy, and to forsake your own body, and everything, in order to salvage and deliver sentient beings. And they are the four immeasurables, loving kindness, compassion, joy, yeah. and equanimity. So, of course, the body vow is generating bodhicitta. There's this joke. Every time I went to the hair salon, the, the person will always ask, how should I cut your hair? I wonder, if you don't know how to cut hair, then why do you work in a hair salon? It's not very funny, huh? The hairdresser. That's another joke. We have so many swindlers these days, so please be careful. So uh, today, at when I was uh, going out, I heard someone kept saying that, oh my God, it's so hot, I'm about to die. But I followed, I followed them around for three blocks, and yet they didn't die. Chinese have this problems that every time when it's uh, like pain, it's painful to death. Like if you earn so much, you would say earn, earn to death. Everything is related to death. 
So that's good. The Easterners, the Orientals, because the Buddha taught us. That there was a great master that hanged the word, the character death, at the head of his bed to remind himself that he can die any time. So that's why he's very diligent in his spiritual cultivation. So today, in our Buddhist studies or Buddhist practice, we should have this kind of mindset. Always be mindful of death, that we train ourselves until death. Like happy to death, or painful to death, or rich, wealthy to death, or cold to death, hot to death. And of course, death is the extreme. So today, we practice Buddhism for what? To transcend life and death. That in the future, ultimately, you want to reach the realm of no birth and no death. When you succeed in your spiritual cultivation, then you would attain no birth and no death. Someone claims that nirvana is death. No, that's getting it out of context, because in it there is enlightenment. When you have attainment in our spiritual cultivation, the attainment is not only after death. You can have attainments while you're alive. Once you have the attainment, you have no afflictions whatsoever. Everything you can face very, with ease and naturally. You have no afflictions, nobody can harm you, you cannot be uh, ridiculed or cursed. Someone that uh, scold you may die, but you, you you're not dead yet. So the person that uh, reprimands you may be really upset to death, but you're not. So you don't feel anything. You don't care about anything. You don't care about anything. Then you have no afflictions whatsoever, no troubles, no worries very wide open and infinite, boundless. Your mind doesn't have to dwell at anything. It is non-dwelling. And there is no particular reason either. You're very relaxed, at ease, and you are very happy. Whatever you encounter, you just face it, and you don't keep it in your mind. This is a very profound, very high uh, philosophy. So for Buddhist practitioners, should be like that. So if you hear a statement, then you uh, keep ruminating on it and keep it in your mind, and then you start being afflicted and be disturbed by it. No. So the good thing about Grandmaster, see, the monkey from Malaysia in the past, or the uh, Yao Zhong from Singapore, and Mr. Yao from Taiwan, Mr. Tang from Taiwan, they united on the internet and slandered Grandmaster really badly. But Grandmaster did not jump off the bridge in Penghu. 
I didn't think about them often. At those times, many people around me kept telling me it's very bad, very severe. I didn't feel anything. Where? What? Didn't feel anything. And someone printed out all those defamation and libel and showed it to me. I read them all, but I didn't feel anything about it. <laughs> like holding my a wife's hand, which is like the right hand is holding the left hand. No feeling whatsoever. So holding your own wife's hand is like your right hand holding your left hand. No feeling whatsoever. So, the fact that Grandmaster can live amidst the defamation and slanders without any feelings whatsoever, I'm totally at ease and at peace. I sleep, sleep really well every night. I don't have enough sleep because every morning I have to get up and write. So you have to learn from Grandmaster about this kind of spirit. This is extremely marvelous. That a sadaka, a spiritual cultivator, can practice until they reach the realm that you are completely unrelated to the world. But I continue to do good, not for a particular motive to be reborn in the heavenly realms or the Buddha land. No, I just do it out of my bodhicitta. I don't care about them. I forget about it as soon as I did it. As soon as I do it, I forget about it. Therefore, it's mentioned in the Diamond Sutra. Um, any mind that arises with no particular reason, so you just do good, not for any particular reason, then that would be a truly good deed. A true good deed. This is extremely important. Now, let's continue on Lamde. The pain, each in the movement passage, of course. Wherever the chi goes, if it uh, encounters the knots in the channels, then there would be pain. The meditation is a long meditation of bliss and emptiness. So bliss is emptiness and emptiness is bliss. So that at any time you're always happy. Grandmaster lives really happily. Why? Happy is a kind of sensation, it's a feeling. You know it yourself if you're happy because you have no afflictions then of course you're happy. It's a kind of experience oh. or sensation. And the ailment is the ailing lower body. This is talking about lower qi, constipation or problem with urination. The elderly should pay attention. If you have 
swollen prostrate, then you would not be able to urinate properly. That would be very painful. So, constipation. What is the best kind of feces? It's not soft, but it's also not hard. <laughs> it's just like a banana. <laughs> and yellow, just like a banana. Not too soft and not too hard. I remember a, da, a disciple called Zhang Wen Rui. And he had a problem with constipation and now he's gotten stroke. That's lots of suffering, constipation. If you push it, then uh, the anus will bleed. But if you don't defecate, then it would be stuck there. So when he traveled with us in Japan, every morning he had to use a spoon to scoop it out. And he asked his wife to scoop that really hard stuff to get it out. And we, we had to wait on the tour bus. He's still uh, defecating in his room. Very painful. It could be as hard as rocks. Therefore, you need to pay attention to your diet. So, ailing lower body. So, what that means is that your lower chi should not be heavier than your low body. Then your but for the ailing upper body, is the upper chi should not be heavier than your upper body. So, if your poo is too soft, or that's not good. Uh, if it's too hard, it's no good. It should be just right, like a banana. <laughs> That's the smoothest one. Then you feel good. And you feel happy. Otherwise, sitting on the toilet. <laughs> you have this posture and that posture. And, and sometimes with a red face and, and heavy neck, and that it still could not come out. And then you start taking laxative, and then you have diarrhea, just water. That's also suffering. <laughs> so you shouldn't do that every day. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, it's still there because you don't have enough lower chi. And the skillful means as above. Like what we said earlier, three kinds, three methods. And for the upper chi, the locations at the throat chakra, the throat area, throat chakra. And the function is talking, laughing, swallowing, vomiting, their function. 
The upper chi is the one that controls the voice and talking, laughing, swallowing, vomiting. The pain, the swollen or painful throat or inflammation of the throat. That would be troublesome. Grandmaster cannot have the inflamed or swollen throat, then I will not be able to give Dharma teaching. And I have a sore throat, then my voice would not sound right. Because the upper chi controls talking, laughing, swallowing, vomiting. And the pain is the inflamed or swollen throat. And meditation generated is a long, lucid consciousness meditation. Very uh, stable and lucid meditation. Very clear and lucid meditation. And the ailments that you have sore throat or you cannot talk or starters like the starterer that I talked about earlier he wanted the old wife cake, but when he said, I, I, I want, 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 want old, 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 old wife, 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 and then the genie gave him a wife, and after the genie laughed, only then he said, cake. So that's the problem about Starer. I told this joke before. A really poor guy took his girlfriend to the nice restaurant for dinner, and someone asked, "Do you like this wine?" And he said, "I, I, 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 wow, wow!" And then immediately, I poured the wine to him. It's like a cursing. You know, do you, <laughs> do you want to open the ball of wine? <laughs> open. It's like, uh, are, are you joking? But in Chinese, it's like open, open. So. And the wine was very expensive. So problems with starters and coarse voice. Now, next is the peripheral qi. The location is at the top of the head and the 12 major joints. The peripheral chi is at the joints. This is a joint. This is a joint. This is a joint. Right here, here, here. The elbows, the wrists, the knees, and the legs. The twelve joints and the top of the head. So the peripheral chi is at the top of the head at the 12 major joints. And its function is for jumping, running, standing up, sitting down. So the peripheral chi does all these things, jumping, running, lifting or sitting down the functions of the peripheral chi and the pain. If there is a problem, there will be aches in the head and the joints. So 
so in the four limbs and the joints. And the meditation generated is the phenomena of all bliss and radiance inside the body. You would be able to attain bliss and clear light radiance. And the ailment is a, a trophy in the bones, tendons, and muscles. Like people who suffer from stroke, uh, their joints would become like this, would become twisted. If you're paralyzed, you would have atrophy, at atrophy in the muscles and the bones, and also hunched back. You cannot straighten your spine. You always stoop because the peripheral qi so the qi that is in charge of the back is the peripheral qi so it cannot hold it anymore and the skillful means is the same as above okay that's all for today Xiao Ming is a uh, uh, great, always bad. And the teacher asks, How come your grades in class is much worse than your sports? And Xiao Ming said, Well, teacher, you don't know. Don't know what? Because I have a team behind me when I play sport. But uh, for taking tests, I'm on my own. A patient told the eye doctor, I cannot see anything far away. And the doctor asked the patient to follow him and then go out and point it to the sun and ask, see, what, did you see what that is? The sun. So how much further do you want to see then? One day, a family got into the fire, and only the son is inside the house. And the mom was very anxious and asked the son, it's all, the house is on fire, how come you don't come out? Oh, I'm wearing my socks. And the mom said, why are you wearing socks? It's already on fire. And the son's still not coming out. And the mom get really worried. It's on a, on a big fire now. How come you're still inside? Come out. And he answered, well, now I'm taking off my socks. So let me tell you, when it's truly urgent, you carry, you know, the, um, what's that called? The emergency pack. What do you call it? We already prepare that. That if there's an emergency, we just get that back and we can we can run away, like a life-saving pack. 
emergency bag. This is also a joke. I don't want, I wasn't going to talk about it. A man and a woman is eating dinner and the man kept asking the woman, Do you love me? Continue asking repeatedly. And then the woman just look at him and continue her dinner. And then the woman finally couldn't bear it and asked, So do you love me? And the man said, I love you. And how do you prove it? And the man took out thirty dollars and asked the woman, Do you have ten? And the woman took the ten dollars for him. And he placed the forty dollars on the table. And after a while the woman got really angry and asked him. Are you trying to prove that you you love me or not? And the man said, I already proved it to you that the proof is right in front of your eyes, but the proof in Chinese sounds like 40. Do you know that women are really troublesome? <laughs> Women are such a hassle. Women are such a hassle. <laughs> Uh, really, women ask every day, not just every day, every month, every week, every day, they always ask, do you love me? Some that ask every hour, and then every minute, and every second. <laughs> Woman is such a hassle. What a trouble. They have to ask you every day. From they were young until they are old. And they still ask even when they are old. And they ask in the morning, and they ask at night, and they ask during meals. And in the future, I will just take the forty dollars. And the forty dollars is right in front of your eyes, which means the reality is right in front of your eyes.